now we know how those shows got started. <laughs> so now this is what, this is the surprise I mentioned before intermission. So first of all, we have a change in the order. The last two plays listed in your program have now been reversed. Originally, this was to be another 10-minute show, but this has been expanded into a full-length play. So we're going to show you the first 10 minutes and uh, gauge your interest. Uh, the theme of this piece is the exploration of a young man's wanderlust. superficially still like me. <laughs> but in two hours, uh, the running time is for this play is two hours, isn't it? Um, you know, by the way, that's a fantastic top you're wearing. It really matches your soulful eyes. I... <laughs> anyway, uh, two hours from now, many of you will hate me, but I will be on all your minds tomorrow, and some of you <laughs> my story starts my senior year in college. I was a computer engineering major. Coming out of high school, I was quite the sought out after student. I, and after an exhaustive search, I accepted a scholarship to attend the University of California at Berkeley. Go! <laughs> However, after the first three years, I was disappointed with school. Yeah, I was surrounded by other smart people and taught by brilliant professors, but I was seeking some mentoring. And none of the professors I met just seemed to be the nurturing type. They were into their own research, and well, let's just say they were kind of... The most interesting possible of AI social intelligence! We are even making scientific contributions of human, such as what the design I think they get the idea. <clears throat> anyway, so I was saying, they were kind of nerdy. Smart, you bet. Potential mentors? Mentors? No. I don't think so. Oh, you might be wondering why I was seeking a mentor. Well, I tell you, because as you're beginning to learn, I'm a very open person. But the playwright thinks that this information is best conveyed in a technique known as a slow reveal. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you won't have to wait too long. You'll find out more on uh, page 8. Anyway, back to my senior year. Unlike most of my fellow computer engineering students, I didn't want to resign myself to the life of Star Wars conventions and cyber dating. I guess that was what made me interested in minoring in business. But I found out that professors are professors, at least at Berkeley. Nerdy, dull, self-unaware. I don't know, I just didn't really connect with anyone. Until Professor Thomas. His full name was Professor Edmund Kozlowski. But everyone just called him Professor Koz. How cool is that? A professor with a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> My friends call me Data. You know, the cyborg from Star Trek The Next Generation? <laughs> he taught a class in financial management, but mostly it was about business success. Professor Cause was great to listen to. He was confident, smooth, unconventional, funny. I read articles that claim that business has changed that what it takes to succeed has changed. And that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you think superior programming made Microsoft successful? Yeah, right. Tell it to my blue screen. <laughs> <laughs> 
And Apple, brilliant design. And Oracle, the best data structure? No. They were led by founders who had vision, resources, and most important, tenacity. They were led by founders. And they didn't spend time getting in touch with people's feelings. <laughs> they stopped at nothing to succeed. Using all legal tactics and some illegal ones <laughs> to flourish. And their methods are taken directly some of, but from some of the most famous and sleazy businessmen in our history. John D. Rockefeller. Andrew Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, philanthropists <laughs> with their names associated with foundations, plazas, performing arts centers, and in business they were violent strike breakers, market manipulators who employed monopolistic maneuvers that Bill Gates is using a hundred years later. Want to be known for doing good works? then be ruthless in business. That way you'll make all the money you need to do all the good works you want to do. <laughs> there is not a single business ethicist who has a college named after <laughs> See what I mean? Most of my classes, I either blew up or slept through half the time. But not Professor Koss. I hung on every word. For the first time, I actually used the professor's office hours for something other than test preparation. You know, you're awfully inquisitive for a non-business major. Shouldn't you be programming the next big video game or something? <laughs> I enjoy working with computers, but a lot of the business strategies you talk about really interest me. I want to get in the business side. Well, then you're studying the wrong stuff. Software engineers will be like those railroad workers that Andrew Carnegie treated so warmly. <laughs> Labor doesn't become management. I've been thinking about getting my MBA. I'll call the admissions director at Stanford. I assume since you're a student here, you have the typical 4.0 and perfect test score. Yes, but why Stanford? Because that's where I'll be teaching starting next year. And I haven't formally accepted their offer yet, so I still have leverage. <laughs> They're a rival school. <laughs> but the faculty doesn't care about things like that. You know, blue or cardinal, doesn't matter. Green, that's the color that counts. <laughs> I have to think about it. See, I, I was thinking I could work a couple of years and then start applying. And Look, I thought, Daniel, listen, um, you seem like a bright young man, and I enjoy these little talks we have, but I don't have all the time in the world. The best decisions are clear cut. If you want me to call the admissions director, then I will. If you don't, I won't. But don't waste my time. Don't waste my time with an algorithmic flow chart of your assessment process. <laughs> yes, please call me. Daniel was a very unique young man. Yeah, smart. But all Berkeley students are smart. Something about him reminded me of me at that age. I genuinely liked him. And I don't like anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I followed through and called the uh, admissions director. He even got some financial aid. As for me, I waited to hear back from the University of Chicago to match the Stanford offer. And then I went back to Stanford and asked for $10,000 more. <laughs> the only time a faculty member has any leverage is when they're on the job market. <laughs> They gave me the money, which is a good thing because Chicago's too damn cold and my wife would be going for it. <laughs> and that was that. I was going to be a Stanford MBA student. The other interesting experience that year was also a non-computer class. I had to take some liberal arts electives to graduate, and most of the engineering majors chose a course in history of science and technology. It's kind of a snoozer, but... I became very intrigued by the professor, mm -hmm. Barbara Norris. <laughs> what drove Galileo to so blatantly put his freedom at risk? Was it a search for universal truth? It 
part. Is ego to be famous? No. Breaking a taboo by challenging an authority figure? Ah, getting warmer. I never pay too much attention to the words. Just thinking <laughs> how sexy this woman is. <laughs> <laughs> and then she would get to a key point. She would always say, Bingo. Okay, so that's kind of an old dopey term, but it was also the name of the song from my favorite indie group about a, a teenager and a sexual awakening. And then when she would say it, oh, it just blow me away. I, I'd find reasons to meet her in her office. I, I did it several times. We would both be more and more flirtatious. You certainly have a healthy interest in the heart. I admit my interest is more than just academic. <laughs> are a very intriguing woman. And you are a very bad boy. Maybe, but uh, bad boys need love too. Stop. We can't do this in my office. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, we can't do this at all. It's too dangerous. Well, no one can see us in my apartment. My roommate's gone this week. Hmm. Apartment 2H. I knew what was going to happen. But I was curious about his motivation. I mean, I was 25 years older than him, but he was a very good-looking boy. All the girls were interested in him. So what was so different about me to take such a risk? Was it that I was an older woman, in part, was it that I was a woman with brains? No. Was it that I was breaking a taboo? He was breaking a taboo by being with an authority figure. Getting warmer. They have a deep, sexy kiss and fall onto the couch. The lights fade. Then a single spotlight focused on Barbara's wedding ring. Then a light focused on Daniel looking at the ring. Bingo. <laughs> Turns out Daniel had a thing for the married woman. There are many guys who are intrigued by the thought, but it seems to become almost an obsession with him, although neither of us really knew it at the time. We continued to see each other for the next few months, never in the open on campus, because my husband was in the English department. The occasional evening in his apartment, a cheap hotel room on the bad side of town, a quickie in my car or office, I even took him with me to a conference in L.A. I love his energy. <laughs> but flings are temporary by definition. I have a graduation present for you. I was hoping for a different kind of present. No, we don't have time for that right now. You have to leave your ceremony in five minutes and you don't want to be late. I'm surprised you even had time to see me. Don't you have family visiting? Nope. No one. Well, what about your parents? My mom left us when we were two. They, uh, Dad raised me alone, but he had a fatal heart attack after my freshman year here, so it's just me. Oh. I'm sorry, Daniel. I, I feel actually really stupid that I've never asked you about your parents before, but I guess I don't talk too much about my family either. I know. I got very curious about your husband, so I went to see him. Do, what? How stupid can you be? Don't worry. I pretended I was interested in the technical writing class he's teaching next summer. Uh, there's no way he caught up. But you can't be sure of that. I got this huge rush from being in the same room with him. <laughs> Seeing photos on the wall, I, I told him he had a great working family. That was way too Maybe it's a good thing that you're graduating. But I'm getting my MBA just 30 miles away from here. I just thought we could still see each other occasionally. It's not just that you saw my husband. I've actually been thinking we should take a break. Sure. Daniel graduated and went to Stanford. He sent me emails occasionally. And I replied politely, but I turned down his offer to meet. But a couple of years later, I was attending a seminar at Stanford, so I called him and invited him to dinner. I made it clear that it was to be strictly platonic. 
The term platonic comes from Plato's Symposium, <laughs> which explores the nature of non-sexual relationship. <laughs> <laughs> he said he understood dinner was quick and we were having fun catching up. Then he suggested we have a glass of wine in his apartment. Look, I will have a drink with you, but you should know that this is a platonic meeting. I've been behaving the past couple of years and there is no reason to stop now. You sound happy. That's great. I totally respect that. Well, we've mainly talked about me. I mean, tell me what you've been up to. Have you been enjoying learning about the business world? Uh, I have. I interned for a Wall Street firm last summer, worked with their stock analysts and focusing on tech companies. And the classes have been great. And working with that faculty member who helped you, Dr. Cox? Uh, Professor Cox. Until now, not so much. But this semester, I'm taking a financial markets class from him. So we have rekindled our relationship. Speaking of relationships. No, Daniel, that's not what I'm here for, so don't try to woo me. I'm sorry, I just, well, you look amazing. Even better than I remember you. Seeing you just makes me think of those amazing times. Thank you for that compliment. And those times were good. I do think of you too, but that was then. Every heart sings a song. Incomplete until another heart whispers back. Those who wish to sing always find a song. Stop, Daniel. I never knew you quoted poetry. At the touch of a lover, everyone becomes a poet. <laughs> Damn it, Daniel! I said this was going to be a platonic evening. You said you respected that. I do. The poet I've been quoting is Plato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the lights fade as they fall into a deep kiss. As the lights come up, Cause and Daniel in Cause's office. Professor Cause, you said that the internet stocks were a bubble, just like the Dutch tulip bulbs in the 1600s. It's easy to say that now, but how do we know that something is a bubble at the time of a bubble? What if I promise not to ask that on the exam? <laughs> serious? No, if I'm going to invest money someday, I want to make sure I'm not investing in the middle of a bubble. Wow. An MBA student who actually wants to learn the show subject matter. <clears throat> All right. I must have slipped into an alternate universe, but let's, let's see how it goes. Okay. You can never be sure you're in a bubble. But in all investments, you have some type of fundamental value that you can estimate with a mathematical equation. When an investment is priced at a level that can't be justified by a formula, then it has the potential of being a bubble. That's enlightening. I have to think about that. That's good quality. Good for business. <laughs> you mean I'm inquisitive? Hell no. The last thing a company wants is inquisitive employees. <laughs> I mean, you have the ability to make someone think that what they've said is smart when you really mean that they're full of shit. <laughs> that will make you a CEO one day. <laughs> With your cynical attitude about business, what made you become a business professor? It beats working. <laughs> so let's talk about you. What are your plans after you finish up at this prestigious university? Well, I've done a lot of interviews, mostly with venture capital firms and investment banks. I have a few offers. Well, you don't sound too enthused. Uh, the money's good, but... But... I don't know. They, they all seem very mercenary. You know, my dad worked for General Electric. He was always excited when a new GE product would come out. Am I, am I supposed to be excited when the investment bank I work for sells a mortgaged back security? It's a different economy today, Daniel. But I have an idea. Meet me on Friday at 6 at Jimmy's Restaurant. I'm having dinner with someone I want to introduce you to. Cool. I've never had dinner with a professor here before. And you're not now either. Only my guest and I are having dinner. But uh, you can join us for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's the end of the first scene.
want to see more of Life of Us, there will be a stage